Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex. Today's proof of life is December 12th, 2022. It's almost the end of the year. Got about half a month left, approximately two weeks and a little bit of change for you to get your fucking affairs in order and bring in 2023 on a successful note. Now, if what you've been doing all 2022 is grinding, then you can shine a little bit for the holiday season. I think it's only right. But does it mean that you have to let your foot off of the gas? Not even one bit. Why? Because 2023 is going to be the same shit all over again. Just, just on a whole other level. It's going to be a little more difficult. You're going to be one year older. The world is also going to be along one year more. They're going to be more advanced, so to speak. They're going to be right up there with you. For the better, for better or worse, they're going to progress another year with you together. (laughs) Today's uh, proof of life, I did mention, is December 12th. We're going to hand you another 30-minute consult for free, right? And I hope you are appreciating these and binging them even. I mean, you could put them on while you drive, while you work, while you walk, while you run to places to be at, things to do, people to see. And treat this as if this were a one-way conversation between me and you. Essentially, I'm walking you through what it is I do on a professional level. I'm giving you some a couple of insights, a couple of sneak peeks into what I do professionally for others. I'm a career consultant. I work in professional development. I consult for people who are in the matrix, who had the option to take the red pill or the blue pill and consciously took the blue pill and now regret it, or or out of spite, took them both, and now I want to wreak a little havoc, I want to rock the boat a little bit inside of corporate. So uh, let's see what uh, today brings us. This is coming out of r slash career advice, and they're talking about, what is this, getting silently fired? <laughs> okay. All right, so the title is Silently Fired. No question mark, no no flair, I guess, asking for advice or making it a question or it being a meme. The body says so. Within the last two days, I have realized that I have gotten silently fired from my current position at my job. My accounts have been deleted and I can't log in to any of them, minus the scheduling one for some reason. So so they're on the schedule. Maybe they're scheduled to work. It could be an issue with uh, IT, with the, with the tech department. Maybe they're revamping the accounts management app, the platform, whatever accounts management system they use. We don't know. They continue. It says here, nobody has communicated to me that I have been fired and I have equipment that was given to me at the beginning of working there. I'm not sure what to do with it as I can't really get a hold of them because when I contact my manager, I just get left on red. Do I try to contact my workplace using my personal emails on what to do with the iPad that was given to me as equipment for the job, or do I just do nothing? Question mark. I'm so confused as to why I've gotten fired and why they've fired me this way. There was literally no communication whatsoever, and now I'm stuck with an iPad that I don't even want because it's not the generation I was looking at when wanting to purchase an iPad in the past. I think... The iPad is the least of your worries right now, especially if it's something you don't want. The fact that you mention it many times 
leads me to believe you are either worried you have company property in your possession or you really do want an iPad, but I don't know. You're 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 bet you're you're choosing or attempting to choose up when you're a beggar, right? When you were shopping for iPads, you don't tell us here that you have an iPad of the generation you do want. So you have an iPad, right? It's just not the generation you want. You you never state that you went out and got the generation you wanted, right? So, okay, it's not like you have an extra iPad. You just have an iPad and you're over here trying to, what, flex the fact it's not the one you want? Anyways, anyways, that's not what the post is about. It's about being apparently silently fired. In this situation, what I would do is obviously show up in person. Now, it does depend on whether you were an employee or an independent contractor. Regardless, you ought to seek, I would suggest, seeking legal counsel. First and foremost, be sure you have your onboarding paperwork. The paperwork that you signed when you were hired and onboarded with the organization And if you are reaching out to your direct supervisor, to whoever was next up in your chain of command, and they aren't responding, actively not responding. I mean, if you're blowing their phone up and they are just not getting back to you, it's obviously you've become persona non grata. And what that means is they've been instructed not to communicate with you. And if you contact them to not interact, to not engage you in any way, shape, or form, right? That being said, they may have just written off that iPad as a loss, depending, depending on how egregious whatever violation or justification it might be that you've been fired. Maybe you don't know that you've violated a term of your employment. Maybe you are completely ignorant of this fact and not just claiming to be, not just claiming you don't know why you could have possibly have been let go with no notice whatsoever. They're not communicating with me. Listen, if you don't know, you don't know. And if you know, you would have known. (laughs) Review your employment documents, the policies and procedures, whatever manual you might have gotten, whatever agreement you signed in order to start working for them, your employment documents. Read them closely. If you need help, go to a lawyer. If you need non-legal help, hit us up, the corporate cowboys. We can interpret your agreements. We can interpret your contract for you send you a write-up, do a little one-on-one counseling with you as to potential next steps. But if we can't handle it, we'll tell you to go to a lawyer. If we don't want to take the case, we'll tell you to take it to some other place, right? To a specific individual, to a specific practitioner who might specialize in this sort of thing. But we're not there yet. At the litigation stage? No, nah, no. You want to avoid litigation. What, what are you bitching about? An iPad? No, you should be bitching about your employment, your source of money, what you do to get compensated. Obviously, start looking for work. You have to remain employed. You have to be making money. Don't let up on the gas. Second, review your employment documents, take them to uh, a contract expert, have them reviewed, interpreted for you, underlined and annotated so that you know what you signed up for. You should have known this beforehand before you signed. That's why typically, typically I suggest when getting hired, and you're given a stack of papers to sign, take a day. Take a day and read through all of them. Take two days. 
ask for 48 hours to sign them and turn them back in. Unless, unless the negotiation process, the hiring process is, is so quick, so aggressive that you need to sign immediately on the line. I mean, shit, if it's that fast, you might have signed under duress. You might have signed because of undue influence. You see, now I'm just dropping legal terms. But now, man, if if this was done professionally, then you took your time, you read it, you knew what you were signing up for. There's a clause in there. There's some type of provision that allows the organization to cease employment, to terminate their their employment of you for any reason, for any cause, for no cause, then they're in the right to do so. That company property, you should send it back to them, right? You could leave it with them. I don't know if they're local or if you were working remote. We don't have that context. Again, if I had you in front of me, if this person was in front of me, we would ask them these questions to get additional context. What kind of job they were doing? What industry? What field? How high up the hierarchy? How high in the hierarchy were they even? Right? We don't know. Maybe there's some kind of exercise being done in the organization. Two days isn't a long time. Right? Depends. If you're salaried. If you're hourly, that's two days of not working, right? That's all contextual. And that could raise different color flags for some people. But as a corporate cowboy, you would have already known this. You would have came to Reddit with a different question, with different questions, asking for different kind of advice. But the advice that I can provide is is that of a corporate cowboy with just the information we've been given and the context that we have on hand. And that is whatever this this person wrote for us. It's only been two days. I mean, you're still on the schedule. Find if you're still employed via the schedule. Are you still scheduled to work? If you are, then use your email. Obviously, use your personal email. Use the email that you used to get hired. You should have some kind of email thread in your inbox, a little back and forth. Always document. Always leave a paper trail, electronic or hard copy, right? But leave a trail. Leave an evidence trail that you've attempted to communicate with them. You're still scheduled to work if you see yourself on the scheduling portal. So you still have a job, but you don't have access to the tools, to this office suite that you need in order to be productive for the company. You don't want that to be the reason why they do officially fire you in the future because you weren't being productive. You want to let them know immediately that you don't have access to this. You want to give them notice so that they're aware of it and can fix it, can remedy it. Otherwise, you're just asking to be let go, fam. I mean, I'm not in a position to belittle, to discount what you've done already. And it's good that you've thought to use your personal email, I would use, I would use the email that you use to sign up with them. If there was any back and forth exchange with them before having your work email set up, I would just reply to the very last email that was sent back and forth on your personal inbox and let them know, Hey, I've attempted to get in contact. I seem to have lost access to the work portal. I cannot access any of my accounts. I'm scheduled to work today from this time to this time. I attempted to get in contact with my supervisor. 
but they have not responded. Right? I'm just giving you some generalized language you can include. But I'm sure you can find a way to personalize it so whoever's on the receiving end of that knows that it's urgent for you to get back to work. And to do so, you need access to your work accounts. I feel like this is, this one is pretty straightforward. Let's read a couple of these comments and see if we can't elaborate some, see if we can't build on suggestions that are provided. The first one here says, be careful that they are not managing you out so that you technically quit. Let them terminate your employment and ask for a letter of termination. That way you'll be able to apply for unemployment and any benefits in the meanwhile. Some of these companies are tricky and will grasp at straws, like make it to where you don't show up and they can claim job abandonment. It happens. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree, even though I'm, I'm not a fan of unemployment, public unemployment benefits and, and, and the like, I, I do agree that it could be used responsibly. When I was younger, I did not use it responsibly, and I came away from it with not too good of an experience, but that's another episode. Gratefully, fortunately, I've I managed to uh, rectify that situation, so I'm no longer in violation of any of that. And as far as managing you out, that's why I suggested checking in with the scheduling portal. If you're still on the schedule, you still have a job. Whether you're salary or you're hourly. Find if those hours have changed at all. I mean, the fact that you don't have access to your accounts portal, I think, is less of a justification for being managed out than having your hours cut. Typically, that's when folks are managed out. When they are managed out is when they see their hours being shaved down from, I don't know, 45 hours a week to 38 hours a week to 30 hours a week to 20, 24 hours a week, right? So when you notice that you're on the schedule less, and less and less, that's when you're like, damn, I can't make money to make ends meet. I mean, you should be looking for a job regardless. If you are if you believe in stability and job security, the moment you see your hours go down, you ought to bring it up. That should be a red flag and you ought to bring it up. And when that happens, should that happen, you're looking for another job. You're looking, you're prospecting. Because it's apparent that this place does not have job security for you. The stability just isn't there. Why would you rely on a job that has varying hours like that? It's not, it's not reasonable. It's not logical. Don't do it. If they just cut access to your accounts, again, it's only been two days. I would find if it's some type of... Uh, IT issue, some type of technical exercise that IT is doing. Maybe it's over the weekend, unless you're expected to work on the weekends, right? But if you can't access your work email, I would hit up IT first. Hit up IT directly. Maybe, maybe the chain of command isn't as effective as uh, other organizations. And if you simply ask IT nicely, they can reinstate your accounts. I mean, it's a little more devious. It's a little bit more along the devious route. The more direct route is going to be to, again, communicate with the company directly, use your personal email, asking what the situation is about. 
And of course, CC are responsible parties, all parties that are that should be concerned. Because if you're still on the schedule, you're expected to work. And yeah, I mean, that would be a shitty way to be managed out if you're on the schedule but have no way of working. And two days go by or three days go by or however long you let go by does go by. And then they're like, hey, Alex, we noticed that you did nothing for this span of time. What are you going to say? Oh, I couldn't I couldn't access my email because IT fucking blah, 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 blah. It would ask, why didn't you reach out? You could have came into the office or however your your work plan is structured, however your employment was negotiated, right? But they could use that as a reason, as a catalyst to let you go because you're being non-productive. Don't let that happen to you. I mean, there is a there is a possible it's called excuse. There is a possible excuse that could be used to manage you out, but simply cutting access to your account is not managing you out. Doesn't qualify for it just yet, right? You have to take the initiative, reach out first to get your access, to get your access back. I mean, it depends on how large the organization is also, right? That's all additional context that we need. And as far as let them terminate you, yeah, I mean, if you want to apply for benefits, but in the meantime, you should be looking for a job, fam. Like, don't let don't let the fact that, oh, I'm waiting for them to terminate me so I can get employment. No, dog, you're applying for jobs. You're prospecting positions. You're shooting applications. You're taking interviews. What, what you're going to be beholden to this one company because, what, you're in possession of company property? What if they wrote it off already? What, what if they're like, Alex can fucking keep that shitty iPad that that is uh, two generations old. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a two generation old iPad. Like, yeah, I, I, again, I don't know why the issue with the iPad at the end there, but I feel like being productive at your workplace, getting your access cut should be your highest priority and is what you should be reaching out to them for. Somebody else says, somebody else comments, collect the paycheck until they terminate you. Do not quit. Yeah, I mean, that's plain and simple, but obviously you want to find out why you don't have access to your accounts. I wouldn't bring up the fact like, oh, am I terminated? Oh, am I expected to quit? Like in your email, I wouldn't say that. And I wasn't told that I'm being terminated. I would like to have a termination letter. You're just asking for it to be made official, for it to be legitimized. You're planting the seed. You're planting the idea that you don't want to work and that they should let you go. Come on, be professional. Just ask for the access back. This person doesn't tell us it's a shitty job. This person doesn't tell the, tell us that it's a job they don't want to be doing. Yeah, they can still show up for the check, but they got to do the work. And to do so, they need access. But to just sit at work or to sit at home because they have this iPad, right? Apparently, they can work uh, remotely if they have their work accounts. But to just sit remotely and not do anything, waiting for the checks to come in, that, that would justify managing you out. Because you are scheduled to work. If you see yourself on the schedule, you are scheduled to work. I feel like scheduling would be the first place you would see a change if you were terminated. <laughs> would, would be the follow-up place. Yeah, they could cease your access. They, they could cease. They could void your access, right? They could invalidate all your work accounts, but then immediately after, you wouldn't be scheduled to work. It would remove you from the schedule. It would eliminate you. You wouldn't show up. You wouldn't have access to even that. Maybe uh, like the W-2 portion of it, because that's legally required if they're not sending it to you already <laughs> with your last check. But beyond that, they don't really owe you much. 
You're on the schedule. You owe them to show up. You signed the line. Again, you 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 have to you're gonna have to go into back to those agreements to that contract that you signed and find exactly what your obligations are, what your duties are, what your responsibility, what you're responsible for. Just like the organization is responsible for holding up their end. This third comment says, or is asking, how big is your company and how common is your name? I'm wondering if someone in IT goofed up and deactivated the wrong user. Call HR. If you were terminated, they should have been notified and should be able to tell you how to return the company property you have. Yeah, that's straightforward. I, I, I said, if you don't want, if you don't want the uh, iPad, send it back. But you want to reach out to back to the company on the email you were hired on, right? Just reply and say, hey, I'm reaching out on my personal account. My name is this. Uh, shoot them your employee number too. My employee number is this. I seem to have lost access to my account. CCIT, CC your supervisor, and ask for it back. You're scheduled to work. Bring all that up. You want to cover your ass. Cover your ass from all angles. From all angles. And uh, it says here, yeah, get in touch with AR. If you were terminated, they'll let you know where to send back the company property you have. And then somebody said, and then uh, they follow up with, for example, maybe you are Elliot Smith, and there is also an Eric Smith, and you are E Smith at Worker B, and they were E Smith one at Worker B. IT person is told to deactivate E Smith, and oops, yeah, that makes sense. That's why I would reach out to IT. Keep IT in your good graces, or you know, get in the good graces of IT. And if you ask politely, they'll likely reinstate you. I'm not going to say more than likely or more likely than not, but they'll likely reinstate you if you ask nicely. Otherwise, they'll tell you no, right? Just straight up, no, that they've been informed to deactivate your accounts and they will refer you to HR or they will refer you to the appropriate person to get in touch with. The next, this next comment says, enter all the necessary IT tickets, email HR, Email your manager and make sure all the emails you BCC yourself at your personal email. Then call whoever you need to as well. That way you cover all your bases. Yo, this guy, this person, corporate cowboy as fuck. We were talking about a trail, a paper trail or an email trail for evidence. BCC yourself always. Not for every little interaction, but for something like this that raises a potential red flag to yourself, right? Whether or not you've been fired, because you never know what comes of this. Maybe you email uh, HR and HR just decides to shit on you verbally in the email. Verbally? Hold on. Yeah, either verbally or orally. Verbally. Is verbally just using words? But just decides to shit on you in the email. They CC your manager. They shit on you too. If you BCC yourself, forward yourself, that interaction, you're covering your ass. Now, this person does it the right way. Where I also suggested going to IT, I don't know whether IT just automatically starts a ticket for you because, I mean, you can't make a ticket. IT makes a ticket. Contacting IT first allows you to take care of it before it escalates to your manager or to HR. But from what the prompt told us, they've already blown up the manager's phone and the managers left them on red. So, you know, it, it, it begs the question, are they still employed or are they not, right? They say, uh, then call whomever, whomever you need to as well. That way you cover all your bases. Yeah, email and call. Email first because that's the electronic paper trail that we need and then call. So you get out in front of whatever this is. Um, I would email first and let a day go by. I mean, if you start calling and pestering, again, you could 
legitimize the idea that they should let you go. Right? If 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 you give them if you give them reason to look into your productivity, if you give them reason to look into potentially terminating you, it could start something that you cannot easily finish. And then it says, uh, continue showing up for work and wait for them to officially fire you. Correct. Yes. Do not sign anything. It says, hold on. Do not sign anything unless it says you were terminated from the position and make sure it doesn't say it was due to anything on your end. Yes. Sit back for now and play solitaire on your computer while cashing a paycheck. Yes. But notice how they went in an order. There was an order of operations here. First, cover your bases. Cover all of your bases. Get in touch with the appropriate people. Hit up the appropriate channels. Request access as it may may potentially have been due to some kind of technical error. Nobody's fault, right? Quote, unquote, nobody's fault, but a technical error. Let them know that you are still scheduled to work and that you are available for any work, right? So even though it, even though on your end, you don't have access to any of the work portals, let them know that you are available to work, that you're still open to receive tasks and projects. That way it incentivizes them. It behooves them to get the issue sorted, that they have somebody on the payroll who's not being productive. So they could open up those work channels again to you and you have access to your work accounts, right? We're just working with, we're trying to employ, we're trying to exercise this corporate logic. Because if you keep things, if if you give them the tools to terminate you, they're going to fucking terminate you. That's just what corporate does. Corporate looks out for itself. Cor- corporate looks out for the most, efficient, efficacious way of getting things done, not necessarily business, but just of getting things done. So if you tell them, if in your email you put, am I terminated? Question mark, question mark. Nobody told me I was terminated. Question mark, question mark. They're going to fucking terminate you because it's easier than dealing with your bullshit. (laughs) But if you keep a professional, they have no other option but to keep a professional. Now, it may be the case that they did terminate you and just went out of order and how they should have done it, but at least you're able to clear it up in a clear, at least you're able to clear it up in a diplomatic manner, in a diplomatic fashion, right? You don't necessarily burn any bridges. You Later on, you may want to circle back and find out what the reason was, but if you don't know the reason now, I wouldn't gamble it. I'm not shooting that dice. Nah, fuck nah. Fuck nah. And it says, uh, and then it continues here. This same comment says, if you find another position while waiting for them to fire you, remember that even if you give your notice and they say today is your last day, you were terminated and file for unemployment. Even if you don't need to still file and give them the headache. Even if you don't need to, still file. Yeah, I need to comma there. Even if you don't need to, still file and give them the headache when they try and fight it when you have a ton of backup. And the backup being you BCCing yourself, you doing performing the due diligence to cover your bases and be as professional as possible. If you are a professional, if you are a professional, if you are a consummate professional, if how you conduct yourself is professional as professional as possible, they have no other option but to be professional. And if they drop the ball on their end, they will have to pay the consequences. It never hurts you to be the, to be the most professional, to be the most reasonable. It never hurts you. The most reasonable, the most professional never loses. If uh, you are interested in something like this, in this kind of uh, consult, 
reach out to us. If you know somebody who finds themselves in a position where they're where they are in corporate, they're literally in the matrix. Whether or not you had to uh, satisfy certain mandates, certain experimental protocols in 2020, 2021, right? To return to work. And you you took that blue pill because you had quote unquote bills to pay, mouths to feed, a car note, uh, a mortgage, and you need help getting ahead, right? There's a ton of people in your position. You have to recognize that you have the power. To realize that power, what you need is a little dose of reality, a little dose of not giving a fuck, a little dose of kick ass. What you need is a fucking kick in the ass, an M80 lit up under your ass. We could provide that for you. It's the mentality of a stand-up guy with a criminal mind. As we are stand-up guys with criminal minds. That's that's the whole point of being a corporate cowboy. Where you're in corporate, you're surviving in it, and then not just surviving, but also thriving. Again, you take care of business, and the business will take care of you. You can find us on Patreon. That's the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. You can find us on Instagram. That's Corporate Cowboys. That's the handle is at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. If you want to donate to us, by all means, that goes to business expenses and legal fees. There's a PayPal.me slash Corporate Cowboys. There's a Cash App. There's also a Venmo to the link tree in the bio. You're a smart cookie. I know you can find it. You want to send a snail mail? P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California. 95741. Until the next one, you'll be hearing from us.